Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Growth Stock Research. When you search for the range for the upcoming Mercedes EQS, you will find that it is around 478 miles per charge. And media outlets around the world praise the high range of the EQS. But did you know that this number is very misleading? The estimated driving range is estimated for the optimistic WLTP driving range from Europe and not the much more realistic EPA driving range from the US, which both Tesla and Lucid are using. It has been shown that the EPA is the more realistic driving range for EVs and yet all media worldwide seem to ignore this. This video is structured in the following way. Number 1. Mercedes EQS Number 2. WLTP versus EPA and Number 3. Specs Comparison there's no doubt that the Mercedes EQS will take market share from potential Tesla Model S and Lucid Air customers. After all, it is branded as a premium car and Mercedes will score simply because of its reputation and over 100 years of experience as an established brand. Also, Mercedes scores with the design of its hyperscreen. In other words, there will be customers who will buy an EQS simply because of its brand. However, in this video, we would like to look at the Mercedes EQS from a more objective perspective by looking at the numbers and comparing it with Tesla and Lucid. Also, we would like to pinpoint to some questionable features of the Mercedes, which are rarely talked about by reputable news media outlets. It takes YouTubers such as Marcus Brownlee to find out about a seven year old technology being used in the EQS. And if you somehow get somebody in the middle back seat of your car and there's no seat in front of them to hold a screen, well, that's no problem because the headrest is holding a literal Samsung tablet that can pop out that wirelessly connects to the same functions as all the other screens in the car. Now I'm just gonna put my, my tech hat on here for a second because I've, I've never sat in any other luxury car quite like this. But I know tech when I see it and this is a literal Samsung Tab S4 from like 2014 and I, it's fine, it works. I mean, they didn't really do all that much. It still has the logo on the cameras and all the ports and they just put it in a new housing so it'll click into the car. But in a car that probably costs well north of a hundred grand, I don't know, I feel like you could probably do like a iPad mini or maybe something not from seven years ago. And while we're at it, he also criticized the unfulfilled potential of the hyperscreen. What he says is of course much more subjective and it depends on what kind of software you prefer. So take his view with a grain of salt. And this hyperscreen, is definitely visually impressive, no doubt about that, but it's nowhere near as good as it could be. Hear me out. It's like a bigger version of Mercedes MBUX, which is run on some of their previous cars, which all have smaller screens. So this huge screen is cool and futuristic looking, but at the moment, the experience doesn't scale up to be that much better than a smaller screen. Either the UI or the screen itself in the middle is sort of low resolution because I can actually kind of see some pixels on text. But you know what? I'll give that a pass. It's a huge hexagon screen in the middle of a front seat of a car, so you probably won't be super up close to it while you're driving. You're focusing on the road. I get it. But when you do use it, it is a little bit slow. It is a little bit unresponsive. And it is a lot ugly, I think. I mean, this UI looks dated. It looks kind of like Windows Media Player from back in the early 2000s. Some of the touch points are big. Some of them are a little small. I think it could use a fresh coat of paint. As for an overall feature overview of the Mercedes EQS, there are already very good videos out there. And as our focus in this video is on specifications and numbers, we would like to make a shout out to the YouTube channel, The Driver Download that made an excellent overview of the Mercedes EQS and how it compares to the Model S and a comparison between the Mercedes EQS and the Lucid Air. Both links are in the description. This YouTuber made an excellent feature comparison and in a nutshell, Tesla is very minimalist, focused on technology, whereas Mercedes is very opulent and focused on build quality. And he argues that Lucid is somewhere in the middle between these two, and we would agree. However, his specs estimates are in our opinion not always reasonable and he doesn't mention the elephant in the room in our opinion. The elephant in the room is that the driving range by Mercedes is based on the European WLTP driving range and Tesla's and Lucid's driving range estimates are based on the American EPA. In a recent interview with Alex Cutler, Lucid CEO Rawlinson emphasized this point as well. And this is very different from some of these big numbers that are, are cited on a regular basis now in the EV space. Uh, we're not saying 500 at kilometers range and we're not measuring that on a WLTP cycle or an NEDC cycle. This is 500 miles in an EPA cycle. And I think that is the litmus test. And that is the new, the new uh, 
benchmark. And yes, you could then compare the Tesla Model S WLTP range with the EQS WLTP range, but then we need to point out that the WLTP driving cycle differs from the EPA in various ways. For example, WLTP range assumes a maximum speed of 81 miles per hour, which makes sense if you are often driving on a German highway. But if your daily driving routine doesn't incorporate fast driving and speeding, then the EPA makes much more sense as its driving cycle assumes a maximum speed of 56 miles per hour. In other words, for most future EV owners, the EPA range estimate is more realistic. This is such an important aspect in the EV space, which is rarely talked about that we made a detailed video going deeper into this topic. It explains in more detail the difference between EPA, WLTP and EDC in a future Chinese driving cycle. As an EV shareholder or before actually buying an electric vehicle, you should be aware of this. A link to the video is in the description. Therefore, we decided to make an estimate for the Mercedes EQS EPA range. To do this, we collected the EPA and the WLTP range of multiple German EVs, and then we calculated the battery capacity normalized range of the EPA WLTP ratio. So we got an estimate of minimum, maximum, and average ratios on the German EV market. Now we applied this result on the WLTP range that is readily available for the EQS to obtain an EPA estimate. Based on this, we estimate that the range of the Mercedes EQS 450 plus, which is the EQS model with the furthest range, is between 318 and 424 with an average of 382 miles of range. While this range is still decent, it is significantly less than the claimed 478 miles of WLTP range, potentially over 150 miles less. When putting all the numbers together and then comparing the EQS 450 Plus with the longest range version model S Plat Plus and the Air Grand Touring, we can come up with this overview. Overall, we can say that the Tesla Model S Plat Plus is the winner on most relevant aspects, most notable the farthest driving range with over 520 miles and the fastest acceleration from 0 to 60 in less than 2 seconds, thanks to over 1100 horsepower. However, the Lucid Air Grand Touring has the advantage in battery efficiency, which basically means that for less battery capacity, the Lucid could go further than the Tesla. Also, Lucid beats Tesla on charging speed with 225 miles charged in 15 minutes due to its 900 volt charging system. Also, the Model S Plat Plus was recently delayed to the next year, which gives Lucid the chance to hold the title of the best electric vehicle in its class for up to a year, if they meet their delivery target this year. As for the EQS, the only aspect where it wins against both the Model S and the Air is the drag coefficient with only 0.2, which basically makes it the most aerodynamic production car in the world. But of course, as we already mentioned at the beginning, Mercedes has a brand advantage. What do you think? If you had around $150,000 and you needed to buy a high class electric vehicle, which one would you choose? We will reply to every single comment and are planning to make further videos on Lucid. Vielen Dank.